here I have my pomegranate. I just have to twist it to cut it open. I can't really twist it straight. Good enough, look at that line. But now you're supposed to, ugh. Okay, so now you're supposed to twist it. All right, so far, based on how hard this is, okay. Okay, so it actually works better if I just kind of pull it apart like this and not twist it. So you get that. So now I'm supposed to place this on top of a bowl and then whack it with a wooden spoon. Let's see if it comes out. Okay, so as I'm whacking it, it's sliding into the metal dividers that's kind of sectioned off into quarters. So I wonder if that helps. Okay, getting pretty much down there. Now let's see if it worked. Hey, hey, I... It didn't work completely. I feel like, okay, so there's a few thoughts. These white things came into the bowl. It didn't clean it out completely and I'm still gonna have to peel this to get everything out manually. So while it seems like a cool concept, I probably will only give it a six because I don't need this blade to cut it in half. I could have just done that with my knife. The only thing that I really liked about it was that it separated it into quarters. And also look, like this thing is bent now. It's not straight anymore. <laughs> what I do want to test though, is that I've been seeing online that there is an even better trick to cut your pomegranate. So what I've seen them do is basically cut a square on top. Now I don't know how shallow or deep it's supposed to be, so I'm just gonna score it, peel this top layer off, and it's supposed to reveal the cross section of the pomegranate. I didn't do it far enough. Cool, okay, so I do see where the pomegranate is divided. So where these white lines are is where the dividers for the pomegranate are. So I'm gonna cut it. And it's really cool how there's like this X. When you cut it like this, you have no idea what it would look like. <gasps> so neat. See, I already feel like with just your knife, it's so much easier to remove everything. And then you just kind of either put it under water and peel it out go like this and you get easy little clusters. Honestly, I don't really think you need that contraption, so I think it just got downgraded to a three. <laughs> cool. The next one is actually one that I found out from you guys after making the Japanese egg sando and how much I was struggling to peel the egg. I found this neg on Amazon and it's pretty cool. What you're supposed to do is add the egg in. Here's my Here's my hard boiled egg, and then you're supposed to fill the water up to the line, close it up, and then give it a good shake. And what's that supposed to do is just crack the egg. There's like little egg divots in here, which are really cute, and it's supposed to kind of break the eggshells apart from the whites. Okay, so far it's all cracked around. Whoa! and it's actually coming apart. Super clean. Oh. Let me dump out the water and then we'll slide it out. <gasps> this is so, oh, okay. That's not super clean, but it was pretty cool that it slid the egg off. Now I'm gonna give it another try with the other egg because I boiled two and see if it does a better job. I shook it twice really hard, so I'm gonna try to shake it not as hard. This is my first time using this, so uh, it's a learning curve. Okay, so far I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna do it just until I see the cracks kind of open up. I wanna see how easy it is to peel now. I mean, I don't really need this contraption to peel it for me. Uh-oh, okay. So even if I were to do it by hand, like I pulled it out and there's little dimples right here. So you're not gonna get a totally perfect smooth egg. I think just because of shaking it like this does cause, I mean, egg whites are pretty delicate, so it does cause a little bit of damage, but I will say that it's a lot easier than peeling it by hand as you guys saw me do in the last video. So I will rate this an eight. So this next one I have is a clip-on strainer. So basically what you do into a pot of boiling whatever, I was boiling pasta earlier and now it's slightly cooled down, but that's okay. It's supposed to fit into every single 
bowl because it moves. There is a tiny gap here that you see, so we'll see if it fits everything I have. Okay, so these three dividers are supposed to hug the side of each bowl, and it's supposed to catch everything in here so that you're left with a clean uh, pot of pasta or what have you. What I really wanna try this with is rice though, so I think I will do that after. Like you know when you're trying to drain something out of the pot and then you like are left with the spillage in the sink? This actually works really well. So we know that this works with pasta, but will it work with rice? Because that's the true test right there. Whenever I'm washing my rice and I'm trying to drain it, I always lose so much rice. So let me see if that works. <gasps> Not a single grain has fallen through. This is so cool. Wow. Okay, so a few did escape this hole right here but it hasn't fallen into the bowl yet. And it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but I've been looking at it really closely and nothing fell through here. Oh, so a few did fall through, but nothing like the amount that falls through when I'm doing it manually. I'm actually pretty amazed at how versatile it is. Obviously for the rice, I would clean it maybe like two more rinses until the water runs clear. So I actually will give this an eight out of 10. So the next one that I have here is an easy carrot curler. I saw this online and I thought it looked pretty cool just from the design that they posted. Like you can make really cool garnishes if that's your thing. But it also includes a crinkle cut blade. Apparently you can also do curly fries. So we're gonna test that out. So for the carrot, you just put it through like a pencil sharpener. And this would be like a fun way to garnish your plate. Let's say you have Ooh, it's just like a pencil sharpener. Something about that idea just seems so fun to me. Like takes me back to grade school. Okay, so definitely the pencil sharpener side works. And then you're left with a really cool kind of swirly design from the leftover carrot. You don't use the entire carrot though. So it is a little bit wasteful, but you get like a tiny little carrot stick. It's like shaved paper thin. I think I can go pretty far. Oh. You have to apply a little bit of pressure or else it falls out. So I guess what you do, look, little marker. I actually think it works better for a small carrot. You can make like little, I guess this could work for like a cucumber too, like a Persian cucumber, but you get little roses. It would be fun for decorating, but I don't know how practical it is to use in everyday life. What I am curious about is how the curly blade cutter works like how are you supposed to do this so there's so there's no opening you see it's just on the side right here and it doesn't give me a demo of how this works either like are you supposed to remove this okay I'm gonna chop the potato and then see make it a little bit smaller and safer okay oh all right, so you're just supposed to like shave it like this. I think this is great for crinkle cut fries, which is what it's doing. It's not very safe, I will say that much. It's definitely not used for curly fries and I don't even know how I would push it through this without cutting myself. This is a useless tool, I will give it a two out of 10. This next one is one that I've actually been interested in for a very long time now. It's supposed to be a magic butter knife and it's gonna help you spread your butter easily like root or cold butter onto bread. I'm gonna show you guys what it's like to spread cold butter on toast, not toast, soft bread, and it usually tears apart. So let's see if this actually will help. As you can see, it does not spread. And this knife is supposed to like help you scrape the butter so that you could spread it easily onto the bread without tearing. Hmm. <laughs> it's a little bit challenging to scrape it, to be honest. And I'm getting more on this side than I am on this side. Sometimes are these things just too good to be true? Okay, so I'm gonna use the scraped side because that's supposed to be like the magic here. Ah, it does not work. <laughs> I had such high hopes for this. In the photos, it made it look so... Okay, well, I mean, I did get more butter on there than I did with a regular knife, but this thing, 
is a fail. I get that you're supposed to have the butter go through here, but it was harder to get it through um, on the actual side that it was supposed to come out from. It just didn't work, so I give this a one out of 10. I was really on the fence about this one right here. Um, I have a food processor, so I didn't think I'd need it, but it's a manual food processor or food chopper. And I thought this might be cool, like if you were going camping and you wanted to cook and chop up a lot of vegetables, this I could see that being useful. But what you're supposed to do is just place vegetables or onions in here. I have the blade in the middle and it's cool because it comes with a very sharp blade like this. There's two of them. We'll just chop up some carrots. Obviously with a food processor, you would chop it up a little bit smaller too. So I'm gonna do that. Let's see if it works. Oh! <laughs> ah! Ugh. It does get stuck. But once you get through that initial like big chopping, it goes pretty easily. And you actually get really, really good finely minced carrots. This is not bad. I bet you it would do a lot better with something softer. So let me try it with some garlic cloves because you saw in my last video that the garlic mincer did not work. And row, row, row your boat. Huh. So it did get the initial few chops in, but once the garlic settles at the bottom, you can't really get it into the blade anymore. Now, if I scrape it up and then redo it, sure, that'll work. Or if you had many cloves in there, but I feel like three is typical for a recipe. So I don't think it works well for garlic. I figure you could just easily chop it with a knife and do it that way. But for something like this, um, it definitely works. So with that in mind, I think it would be perfect for an onion. So Nate is arguing with me that I'm not giving it a fair rating because he thinks that an onion would have done a good job, but this is not called an onion chopper. It's called a, what is it called? It's called a small pull chop. So you should be able to chop anything in there. I mean, in theory, right? With that in mind, I will give it a fair rating of seven. We are going to try out this Brussels sprouts core. I don't know if you ever really need to core Brussels sprouts. I've never really thought about that, but I saw this and with Brussels sprout season coming up for the holidays, I guess we're still a few months away too, but whatever. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to core the Brussels sprouts so it cooks evenly. Honestly, I've never even thought of that to core the Brussels sprouts to cook it evenly. I usually just kind of chop it right here and then call it a, cut it in half and then roast it. But how are you supposed to use this? But this one you're supposed to put it onto this pin right here and then shave, shave off the middle. It doesn't even really work. Let's try it with a sturdier one. Now I should have it straight and then put it in far enough so that it could touch the blade. That doesn't even work. It's supposed to take out the meat from the middle, but why would you take the meat out from the middle? That's like the good part. I do think this would work well for a strawberry though, a strawberry huller, but then you'd still have to cut it out. And no, it actually wouldn't work for a strawberry. So this one gets one out of 10. So this next one is a fun kitchen gadget that I have never seen before. It's a grapefruiter. Get wedges of grapefruits in seconds. I can see how that would be useful if you like adding grapefruit to your drinks or having it for breakfast. But what you're supposed to do is cut this in half. And I got one of these Oro Blanco ones because they're my favorite. You can use it on any um, grapefruit. They have like a ruby red one here. But I wanted to use it on this specific one because the peel is a little bit thicker. Is this an Oro Blanco or a pomelo? I don't know. It's a little thicker. So it tends to be a lot harder to get the grapefruit out. It's a lot more work. So this one would be perfect for it if it works. You're supposed to put it in the center, kind of following the shape of the grapefruit. And there's a blade right here that'll cut it out for you. Hey, it worked. <gasps> Actually very clean too. You're left with a little bit of meat in here, but nothing that you can't scrape out. And to be honest, 
I hate peeling grapefruits. So I think this is a really excellent tool. This is actually really cool. Let's see if it works with the smaller grapefruit because I do have a ruby red one too. <gasps> Yay! I do feel like the ruby red ones, because the segments are a lot smaller, it's not coming out as clean. You see, like it's cutting through the segments. It's not, it's not like a perfect triangle like this one because this grapefruit has rather large segments it was able to do a really clean job. Yeah, so I would say it definitely works better on large grapefruit. So I actually will give this a seven out of 10. So you guys saw in my last Amazon gadgets video, I had a really cool watermelon cutter. And so I noticed there's a lot of really interesting watermelon tools this year. Um, is it just because watermelon's so hard to cut? I have no idea, but we have this ginormous watermelon cutter that cuts it into perfect wedges. Let's see if it works. I feel like it will. It's kind of like an apple slicer, and I know those work, so I'm gonna cut the top, and then you're supposed to take this, put it in the center, and push it down. I'm putting all of my body weight. <sighs> I feel like this is something that would be better done on the floor where you're not standing up so that you could just like slam it down. But for filming purposes. Okay, and there you go. Not as easy as it seems. You get this beautiful middle core that it didn't cut all the way through. Again, like I said, I think it would work better if I were on the floor and I could have like more of my weight on it to push it down, but on a countertop, which is usually where people cut fruit, I don't know, it just, it was really hard. <laughs> so you get a perfect wedge like this. It does look beautiful, it really does. And I'm very tempted to just eat this middle thing. Mmm, that's a good watermelon. It definitely works. Whoa. You just peel the core out, I guess. But I'm wondering, because this is just like a large apple cutter, will it work on an apple too? It can work as a dual tool. And actually guys, it's just more fun to eat a watermelon in this cylindrical shape than a uh, wedge. Anyways, I would always go for this if it were up to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Still super hard to do. Ah. Yeah, it was a lot easier to cut this on the floor when I could put my whole body weight on it. <laughs> and then to take this out, I mean, I guess whatever works. But I'm not gonna judge it based on the apple because that's not what it's meant for, although it could serve as a dual purpose. And it actually cuts it pretty well. I do think this watermelon tool is cool. Not as cool as the watermelon wheeler because there's no like wow action in there, but it works and I'll just give it I'll give it a seven out of 10 because it's not very easy to press down. I was actually gonna test out this hyper chiller for you guys. What it is is just like a chamber where you could cool your drinks down in 60 seconds. But after reading the directions, I thought it was pretty useless. You're supposed to fill um, this chamber pour it in here, fill it up with water, and then chill it for 12 hours, and then you pour your drink in, you shake it up, and then it pours out. But like, why wouldn't you? This whole thing takes 10 hours to do, and it's just not worth the effort. You could always just put your drink into the freezer for like 10 minutes, and I feel like it could get cold enough. I didn't even bother testing it, because I didn't think it was worth it. But anyways, let me know what you guys thought of the kitchen gadgets here and which one you would actually try. My favorites were the neg and this uh, clippable strainer because it actually worked really well. Let me know if there's any other gadgets you want me to try that you've been curious about because I try them out so you don't have to. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like these types of videos, be sure to give this video a like. That would really help out my videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more fun hack and reviews and recipe ideas. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!